Oh, I've got something freaky to tell you right now. NASA's Kepler telescope has identified an odd star, or is it a star, that is giving astronomers pause and raising questions about the possibility of an extraterrestrial civilization. A distant star's light is flickering due to a tight band of matter circling it. And that would normally mean that the star, maybe it's young, maybe it's old, is just doing its business, but it's making scientists wonder about the possibility of an alien civilization that has built a megastructure around the star, harnessing its energy and power. Dr. Michio Kaku, theoretical physicist and professor at the City College of New York, joins me. Welcome back, doctor. Welcome. So let us talk about this. What is this flickering star business? This story could be as big as the discovery of the wheel. What? The invention of fire. What? We're talking about a story of all stories. Yes. Because this could change our understanding of our place in the universe, a megastructure perhaps bigger than a planet that's controlled by an intelligence. Or the story could be a dud. Okay, so basically there's this, this uh, optical telescope that has been looking for dimming starlight and it has found something where the light dims by about 20%. Normally light only dims by 1%. What does that mean? That means that we scientists don't know what the hell we're talking about. Oh, great. It means that we're clueless as to what could cast a shadow bigger than Jupiter. Mm -hmm. Think about it for a moment. If this object is artificial, it means that a civilization has been able to manipulate an object bigger than Jupiter. And how much bigger is Jupiter than the Earth? Oh, you're talking about thousands of times bigger than the planet Earth, and this is even bigger than Jupiter. Now, we're, we're going through the usual suspects. Is it a comet? Is it a meteor? Is it an asteroid? And one by one, we've ruled out all the logical possibilities. It's not a pulsar. The last possibility is that it's artificial. Mm -hmm. And if it is, it's an object bigger than a planet that's casting a shadow in front of the mother star. It could be a Dyson sphere. An object now explain what that is, because I, I read that in your notes, and I, I don't quite understand. I'm not familiar with a Dyson Sphere. A Dyson Sphere is built by civilization that can play with stars, that envelop the entire star with a shell, absorbing all the starlight. You would have to be thousands of years ahead of us. A type 1 civilization, for example, just harnesses the, the power of the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Weather control, for example, like Buck Rogers, maybe. This is a type 2 civilization, perhaps, that can play with stars, like in Star Trek. Mm -hmm. The Federation of Planets would be type 2. Then what is type 3? Galactic, like Star Wars would be a type 3 civilization. Now, what are we in comparison? Do we play with the weather? Do we play with stars? No, we're type zero. We get our energy from coal and from oil, dead yeah. plants basically. So this civilization, if it is one, will be thousands of years ahead of us. And it's really far away. It's about 1,500 light years away. Mm -hmm. There are 5.8 trillion miles in every light year. So, I mean, it's almost impossible to calculate how far this thing is. But now, the craziest thing that you told me before we started, the Kepler telescope is offline. It can't take in any of that data anymore, so we cannot learn anything more about this anomaly. That's right. The Kepler uh, satellite, which detected this object, this mega object in space, is offline because the gyroscopes are uh, basically broke and it cannot align itself now and take pictures. And we can't bring it back to fix it, so what does that mean? Well, if you're a conspiracy theorist, you would say that when the aliens figured out that we're on to them, mm -hmm. they crippled our telescope so we can't get any more information. However, what some people are saying now is we should then point our radio telescopes to listen in on their I Love Lucy and their Leave it to Beaver. Yeah. That is their television and radio. That's how we will do it. That's how we'll do it the next, uh, the next year. All right. Well, well, let us do that. Let us train our radio telescopes on the far reaches of the known universe and figure out if we're going to have company. If so, are they going to obliterate all of us? That's right. Remember Carl Sagan said, remarkable claims require remarkable proof. Mm -hmm. We want remarkable proof because this is a remarkable claim, a claim of the century. Last question. We only have five seconds. What does your gut tell you? Aliens or no? I think it could be a highly irregular solar system, a bizarre solar system with multiple planets eclipsing each other in random ways. Maybe there are things about the heavens that we don't even know, and we don't need aliens to, uh, to further explore. Thank you so much, Dr. Kaku. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. It. Very good.